You're watching the Motorola Edge 20 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Now we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. And it's a very thin one. At this point, the camera lens cover needs to be removed. If you happen to crack any of the glass camera lens covers, they're just held on with some adhesive, so you just need to apply some heat and gently pry them off. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. The NFC antenna is located in the center, and there are numerous antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover, which are these light gray color lines. The LED flash is located over here, and here's a look at the other side. Now we can go ahead and peel off the graphene film. Once we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect it. Now we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are three coaxial cables on the bottom right of the board that need to be disconnected by just popping them off. There's some copper tape covering the connector for the front facing camera which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect that cable. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the main board which needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. The ultra wide and micro lens is located on top, followed by the 108 megapixel main lens, and below that is the high res optical zoom lens, which has 30x super zoom. There's a secondary microphone located on the top corner, and the connector for the lens can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's also copper tape covering the shields. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of these chips. Taking a look at the back, the proximity sensor is located on the top corner. The other two camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's another microphone located in the corner over here. And there's thermal paste on top of a graphene film and copper tape which cover the shields. Once the graphene film and copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of these chips, as well as an aluminum block on top of the processor. Now this is the first time I'm seeing an aluminum block on the processor. Here's a better look at that aluminum block. There's a thermal pad underneath it. And here's a better look at the processor and RAM. Now the speaker assembly can be removed. There's some graphene film over the speaker assembly and more antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover. And here's a look at the speaker itself. We can disconnect the flex cable over here on the subboard and the other ends of the coaxial cable. There's a small catch over here on the mid frame holding the subboard down, which we need to bypass to lift up and remove the subboard. The primary microphone is located to the corner of the charger port on the subboard, and this is the charger port itself. Here's a look at the other side. In order to remove the battery, there are no provided pull tabs, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Alright, so once the battery is removed, we can see this flex cable over here, which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the SIM reader over here. We can also see the screen cable, which is routed through an opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace your screen, you would have to take the back plate off, remove the screws on the top cover, and remove the top cover itself, giving you access to the screen cable so you can disconnect that, and then you have to remove the battery. At that point, you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then you pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive, reapply your new screen making sure you run the cable back through the opening in the mid-frame, 
and just reassemble your phone. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening. Both flex cables for the power button and fingerprint reader as well as the volume keys are routed through the midframe. So the cables are in between the screen and the midframe itself. So if you ever had to replace those, you'd actually have to pry the screen off as well. Same goes for the flex cable over here for the button on this side. And the earpiece speaker itself is held down with adhesive as well. So if you had to replace that, you'd have to gently pry it off. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 7.5 out of 10. The back plate is fairly easy to pry off and other components aren't too difficult to remove as well. However, there are no adhesive pull tabs to help you pry the battery off. So prying that off might be a little bit difficult and take some time. Now it's time for me to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.